Hello. How are you, Captain? I'm very good. How are you? I'm just removed from the bed. I've been feeling kind of down today, but I'm here no less. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and um, but what what time is it for you now? Like like two o'clock in the in the afternoon, right? It's two nineteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. They just finished the count. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And and something happened that, that or, or is is everything fine for you? Something happened. Yeah. Something good or bad or something happened in in your in your daily life or is it all, all right, all fine with you? All fine with me. Okay. So just living in the place, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but still things happen, <laughs> you know, I just want, I was just curious whether whether something happened or it's all, all is fine, okay. Yes, it's yeah. just, it's trauma soup, you know, you live in a negative place, it's bound to have its effect, you know, you have to find means to be able to stay while it's up. Uh, mm -hmm. The energy that it, it, it Uh, puts off, you know. So yeah, just, everybody has to deal with it. Mm -hmm. the way that we deal with it is different from person to person, in various stages and levels. So yes, but it's necessary that we find constructive means to stave off the trauma that's uh, ubiquitous, that's constant. Yeah, I can. I, I I try to imagine what what a challenge this is, because you know, I think we we both both. Uh, see it in this way that there's like a there's like a collective collective consciousness and there's is a wider wider collective collective consciousness maybe the whole whole humanity or maybe even even wider but there is also like a local collective consciousness and absolutely yeah and i think it's a, such a challenge to 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 not you know not dive into that negativity and just keep out of that Yes, we actually spoke about that very thing in the group today, and I asked guys to imagine how much trauma was in the building that we were in. Oh, Just wow. unimaginable. Wow. And if somebody actually cast into it, it would probably be overwhelming. Just to even think about the amount of trauma that we individually had gone through, to think that we could uh, somehow imagine that the amount of trauma that was in the building would be just too much. And I said, but yet, we all have to find ways to resist the energy that thoughts about that very trauma project in the, in the environment that we're in because thoughts or things, they are material forms, albeit very subtle, microcosmic. That energy is the thing that surrounds us. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I told him you can either shuffle up to someone and you can touch them and you can feel the electricity come off of their body, that static electricity. I said that is being thrown up into the air that we exist in orally from our, each of our auras mm -hmm. and we don't realize it and we can't see it but we have to deal with it no less mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and so and so i think people like you who are able to to stay out of it i mean I, i'm sure you can't do it all the time but you let's say in mainly stay out of it You, you, you must have developed a kind of strength in that. A very high focus, I would say, you need. Right? Yes. It's a, yeah, it's a certain level of self-awareness. Yeah. Certainly. At all times. Because you don't, we act habitually. And um, that goes back to the guardian, so to speak. We practice doing things a certain way that when certain stimuli happen, we respond automatically without really even thinking about it um, deep from our subconscious and we're not oftentimes rational about it we're just responsive rather than being proactive because we habituate in that way and same way with the environment things happen we react in prescribed ways simply because we've been socially and culturally learned from this local environment in the way and we respond so it's um But as I said, you need to be self-aware that this is happening to you and find ways to center oneself and bring one back to a, a rational uh, mode of thinking. And mm -hmm. you, have to be, you just have to stay self-aware mm -hmm. at, mm -hmm. at all times. It's possible. You just have mm -hmm. to be aware. 
maybe once we will have time and I talk a little bit about, you know, there is there is the newest, let's say, research on the on the function of the brain gives us a lot of, of information about how you can switch modes, you know, how you can switch your mode from the negativity to the to, to the self-aware mode to the mode where you have the full full um, resources you know full inner resources and so on is very interesting but maybe today ariel because you just mentioned the guardian and i, I remember in, in one of our last calls you 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 said you would would give give me some more ideas about this guardian do you want to go on with that oh yes i'll um i'll absolutely Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a guard is somebody that sounds almost like a sentinel that, that sits and stays, almost like somebody that's on the post. And a sentinel, you know, is generally somebody who looks out and stays watched, that's vigilant. And it's ironic that the word is spelled S-E-N-T-I-E-L, a sentinel. And all, I like words, especially the English words. Yeah, yeah. It breaks down to sent in L, mm-hmm. actually. And it's almost like an L in Hebrew is, is God. Mm-hmm. If you sit in God, if you sit God in, he would never get off his post. In terms of a sentinel, he would stay there and watch forever. It's <laughs> being like a 24 hour guardian. Mm-hmm. So that guardian in us is always on his guard. And I just said that the things that we do come from our habits that are deep inside of our subconscious. And we would attempt to bring in change to do something different than the guardian knows. It starts to feel uncomfortable. And when it's uncomfortable, it fights against it. It puts up the greatest battle it ever could because it has to maintain itself to stay alive because I have it to live. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like a king on his throne. When it is threatened, it sends out attack guards. Fear, mm-hmm. anger, frustration, different things of that to be able to attack that change to put it at bay so that we can maintain our comfortability in our habitual ways. Mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. order for us to change our ways, we have to basically establish a civil war with ourselves and go to battle with the king. And I'm sure you heard said that um, if you shoot at the king, you got to be successful, or you only get one shot at the king or certain something like that. But uh, can uh, you? Sorry, that, uh, can can you repeat that a little bit slower? You're you're already becoming so fast again. It's so interesting. <laughs> Just the last two sentences. So I was saying that if you, if you shoot at the king. You must make it count. You have to be successful. Oh. You only get one shot at the king. Oh, yes. Yes. Now I understand. Yes. Okay. So this means if you if you try right. to, to, to conquer your own habits, you need to, you, you need to have the right, uh, with the right angle, the right uh, power, and, and, and then the, uh, to, to, to have this one excess to, to change something, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Not saying that you only get one try. But you have to have the right method or you're not going to be able to change it. It's going to maintain. Mm-hmm. Wow. You, that's... It will thwart the effort of yeah. change if it's not the correct uh, method to be able to form, uh, cause the catalyst that's going to induce that change. So, so many people would like to change, yes? And, yes. But they don't. And... I had once a, a spiritual teacher who told me, you cannot change and remain the same. <laughs> Because it's, this is what everybody wants, you know, want to remain the same, but change, you know. <laughs> If you're going to change something, you have to change something. Mm-hmm. So what? As you just said, mm-hmm. if you're going to change something, you have to change something. Yeah can't do the same thing. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. It's impossible to do it. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't you say so, yeah, so. that that change is also something that is not, not just, you know, I would, uh, how you say, uh, it's, it's not just initiated by the small ego. It's a much bigger move. And it's more like it's, it is changing. It's not you who's You know, you you do something. I think you need to do something also on your side, as a, as the ego side. You need to. You need, I think you need to to want. You want to. You, you need to want to change, and you need to be somehow. Um, 
feel safe that the change will be good for you, that that is what, what you can do. And you maybe can try to focus on certain things, but finally the change is a move in itself that it's much bigger than you are. Yes, I agree. I agree that absolutely. The change is a deep motivating desire or something that you're forced into without any say so in it. Yeah. If, if the desire is so, such deep and motivating, you stick to it because you're self-interested and you want to do this. And you put all the energy into it that you can to bring about that change because this is something that you want and you stick to it. Hard nose. You keep driving. Or you're forced to do it and even though you may not want to do it, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. And so you have to adapt because you've been forced to do it. So yeah. And you've been forced along. But it, it induces the change no less. So without the deep motivating desire or force behind it and your deep motivated desire ultimately is the force or the force itself is, is the force is internal, your deep motivating desire or the force is external, a force per se, mm -hmm. um, that induces the change. But it has to be something that is, yeah. is, is powerful, something yeah. that moves you yeah. to move eventually. And I would say let's say if if you would if if there would be a statistic on that i would say the majority is is more external external motivated changes so powers from outside and 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 even then if if the wave comes you know if the tsunami comes there is still a choice i would say the choice is will you go up with the wave or will you decide to go down you know Will you yeah. go to the light or will you go into the darkness? It's a choice. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it goes back to certain illogical respect. We, they say we have free will. We have the choice to do certain things. But as you said, we can use that choice for benevolent purposes or they could be used for malevolent purposes. Yeah. It's all in us, the desire that we have. What is motivating the choice to change? Mm. Mm -hmm. So tell me a okay. little. Tell mm, no, no. Please go on. Yeah, uh, in, in in terms of uh, people not wanting to change, as you said, we um we are comfortable with who we are. Basically, that's how I, we are. Who we are. We keep fashion this person, as I said, through practice, over and over and over again. We become these people who we are. So, and to do something different is to be uncomfortable, and to be uncomfortable, we're not. That's not okay, mm -hmm. and that makes the guardian come out. And but to, we have to be uh, accept the idea. You have one minute remaining. We have to accept the idea that it's okay feeling uncomfortable to produce the change because yes. the feelings, our feelings, are the number one blockage or deterrent to us changing. Mm -hmm. They don't feel good. Yeah, <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's, it's the key. I would say it's one of the major keys that, that the willingness to go into that what doesn't feel good. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that, that is the, the deep motivating desire. Yeah. Absolutely, that is the willingness. You have to be able to do it. Who wants to attack the king? They yeah. know if you attack the king, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> so you got to have to yes. win. Yes. Better have a good plan. Yes. Or it's going to be disaster for you. Yeah. That's so interesting. I'm I'm looking forward to get the next the next part of the story. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for using GTL. So as always, the interruption after 15 minutes. Um, today I will won't have so long time um, so we will have a second call that maybe we can do half of it and but yeah so let's wait for the call so ariel is talking about this method how you really can really successfully change something in your life and 
I would say everybody wants to change certain things in his life. Hello, this is a police call from an inmate at the Indiana State Prison. To accept this call, press zero. To refuse this, your current balance is twenty dollars forty nine cents. This call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using GTL. Okay, I'm back. Okay, back. So now I'm so curi curious, Ariel. How how what is the what are methods? Do you have ideas? I'm sure you have. What are methods where you, as you say in the picture, if you if you attack the king, if you want really to do you you really want to change something in your life? to the better um, and you have maybe only the one try because then all the forces will come up and try to hinder you and try to bring you back into the old patterns. So what are the methods to change? What would be the method? Yeah, the method. I would just say, what, as you said, it has to be some motivate, deep motivating factor. There has to be the force that you want to change. There has to be something, a goal, a purpose for which you are shooting for. And there has to be the notion that this can be done and that it's achievable. One has to believe oh, okay. that. Okay, that's it. that's it. Okay. And so let's, let, let's talk about people who, who somehow lo have lost their hope have lost their belief that change is possible and that change could be good. Is there any chance for them or do they just need to wait until something comes from outside? I, absolutely, I believe there's hope for everybody. There, there's a saying that says hope springs eternal. As long as we draw breath in our love, we have the ability to be able to be something different due to the fact that we are here and we're seeing a different day. And People say taxes and death are the only assurities in the world. Well, I'd say change is more sure than either of them. Mm. Everything changes in the world. So to the extent that we think that we are in a stayed place, certainly people in our personalities, I, I'm disbelieving of that, or you can never convince me of such, because we have made it to the day that we are right now today, you, I, and everyone else. And through that process, we have all changed. We have come into the world as infants, and we have evolved. We have changed into an adult, and we will continue to do so. If nothing, only but for the passage of time, we're going to change. Usually we see it in our bodily forms. We see it affected in our, our posture, our 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 ability to to move around, to ambulate, we get older, we're not as functional, our health decreases, we can see it in our faces, we grow wrinkles, our hair grows gray, different things of that nature. As well, we mm -hmm. don't act as children anymore or young adults, we start to act as older people. We have changed due to the passage of time. So there's nothing else but for the passage of time, we have the ability to change. So hope is really just saddled in one's heart and what one thinks about. And I would say that someone who is hopeless for the most part, it can be arrested. It can be thrown in jail. It, it can be coupled up, stopped, and, just, and put away. But it goes back to what is one thinking in their mind. I mm -hmm. think they have to be shown a different way, given a new ideal that it is possible, and given an example that they potentially can mimic. Yes. Mm -hmm. That they can mirror and that hope is possible because mm -hmm. ultimately one sees what one sees ultimately one starts to believe or what one thinks yes. one definitely believes mm. and, and i think in theological doctrine it says that what one thinks in his mind so that man is as a man yes. thinketh, so he is if one thinks he can change or have hope there will be hope guaranteed yeah yeah mm-hmm and um, so this is why, why role models are so, so very important. And this is why, why I think you will be so, and you are already such a fantastic role model. So, so your, your contribution is and will be to inspire other people. Ah, 
Can't stand it. Yeah. Can't stand it. Yeah. I'm going to have to hang up and call you right back. My line is now, it's intermittent. I can't even really understand what you're saying because it's broken up. I'm going to okay. have a call right back. Okay, maybe no, maybe it's better now. Because I, I yeah, was maybe yeah, too far yeah. away. It's 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 not it's, it's because me because I'm I don't have a, such a good microphone today. So It's better now. Yeah. Okay, it's better now. So it's, so that's it's on my side. So um no, I was what I wanted to say or try to say is that that, it, that this is why role models are so important. And I I think that you are such a great role model. And, and I think this is your contribution and will be your contribution to inspire other people. Because if you could do it, everybody will be able, can do it, you know? Uh, that, that's the message. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. And I, I hear people say that all the time. If I can do it, they can do it. Yeah. I believe that we all can do it. Yes. You know, I believe that we are, we are heroes, all yeah. of us. We're yes. superheroes, even. You know, and uh, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but <laughs> the the Marvel comics, all of the Batman, Superman, Aquaman, mm -hmm. Hulk Hogan, Spider Man, they all have logos in their chest. Most of them in the outfits that they wear. Yes, the outfit, the logo on the outfit suggests who they are. It gives you an ideal. The depicted symbol basically says it's their calling card. Tells who they are mm -hmm. essentially in their outfit. Mm -hmm. But We all have logos in our chest as well, in the same place, centrally located. Those logos that we have in our heart as human beings are hearts. Yes. That pump our blood, that keeps us alive. That's like an energy power plant. Iron Man has some plasma circle in there that's like some type of nuclear something going on. We have love. Our heart is a depiction of love and that energy, that power for me is the greatest power in the world and it powers up each and every one of us. No one has any different logo when it comes to human beings. We all have the power plant of love that keeps us going, that keeps our heart flowing. And as long as that is pumping within us, we have the energy. I told you my energy is my energy. Mm. <laughs> and that is the ability to do anything as long as that I can believe it. And I trust in it. So, and I know that the hero, as it relates to me, my uh, uh, ancient ancestors, come from Egypt. Not Osiris, Isis, and Horus. They were originally were Aset, Asar, and Hero. The name was changed so that we would know that we were really originally the Hero, the H-E-R-U. Not mm -hmm. the H-E-R-O. We were the original heroes. Mm -hmm. And Hero did what he would usually do. He went and avenged his father and turned the tragedy into a triumph. Mm -hmm. He basically saved the world. The original hero did. And for me, coming to understand that was like, wow, that's incredible. Finding out about that story of Asara, Set, and the hero, not Isis, Osiris, and Horus. Okay. Come, that tires me up even to this day. Okay, I will look this up because I don't know the, the story really, but I will, will look it up. Yes, it's very it's, interesting. But it's going to be called the Assyrian Resurrection. Mm -hmm. Okay. That'll be the story. Yeah, okay. It's very interesting. I, I, will, I will have a look at it. Um, may, <laughs> yeah, okay, great. The um, original hero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is us, Constantin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We don't need anybody to save the world. We can do it. We yes. can do it. The Christians say, Emmanuel, God with us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, just, just, going, just going for a moment back to this situation for people who, who are not yet believing that they are the heroes. Um, and yes. I, I once heard a, a, a sage in, from India, I once heard him saying that there there is there is always grace in this in this in this act in this moment where, where if if somebody let's say wakes up or starts turning around there is a part of grace so it's bigger than this person and but he says on the is other side g r a c e g g r a c e yeah grace yeah And grace, yeah, grace. Okay. and and but he, on the other side he says, but it's also there's a part of the individual 
there's also something. He can't do it himself because he needs some grace also, but he also need to yeah, be open and need to want and need to believe. So it's again the, the circle. And if we talk about grace, so this is something that comes yeah, from within, from the inner G, what you, as you say, so su suddenly it opens <laughs> and yeah. And, but there is also sometimes coming like initiations or impulses from other beings, from other humans. So I, I can imagine you had also people like, pe beings like that on your path in your life. If I, if I think back, you know, the, the young, the young, um, young Ariel, um, were there people who, who, who gave you a good impulse in your life so that you started seeing things in the other way? Yes, indeed. Mm. Um, coming into the environment that I came in at such a young age, there were older men who recognized the desperateness of the situation that I faced, having had the experience of going through what I was essentially about to go through, and them being older men. And they knowing what I needed to even to attempt to try to navigate the the bridge or the road that I was about to set upon. And them coming to me and essentially telling me. I always told they told me three things to begin with. Work on my case to get as much education as I could and to mind my business. And then someday I'll have a chance. The laws would change and I'd have a chance to get out of prison. Mm. Those three things would set me right. And okay. I've tried to adhere to those three things. And I'm at this point that I am today by essentially doing those things. Yeah, very good. And, excuse me. And along with those things, as I've matured and I've gotten older, there have been men who have intersected my life who have been faithful men, who have been pious men, whether they've been Christian men, whether they've been Jewish men, I mean, uh, Uh, Muslim men, whether they've been Hebrew Israelite men or Ekinkar men, just men of faith who I've had an uh, opportunity to have conversations with, who have essentially um, opened my eyes to things that I never would have thought, seen, or considered had I not had conversations with those men. Mm -hmm. In another realm, from another totally different realm, from a divine realm. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. In, in, in certain doctrinal theology, it says that once one accepts a certain being in Christianity, to be specific, it says when you accept Jesus into your life, your life is changed almost like the twinkling of a lie. You become a new man. Mm. Mm. It's like something miraculous. I think in Buddhism, they say once you accept or you start to work, walk the path or you accept Krishna, your eyes start opening up and you start seeing things a different way. I could have muddled that, but nevertheless, it's the same principle. Once you become aware of the power that's greater than yourself, that has the ability to change you, or that is, is within you, or that you can tap into, it starts to change you. You start to change. Mm -hmm. So for me, becoming aware of that power or something that was greater than myself, it worked a, a, a quote-unquote miracle on me. And yeah. I, I, I wouldn't count myself necessarily a miracle, but it's something miraculous. Yeah. No less. Yeah. 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 And, uh, so uh, yes, because I I'm no longer in the same mindset that I were when I was a young man that I am now. Definitely. Which is obviously, I've grown older, but my total all world view is totally different from being a youngster. You know, mm. I thought it was all about me. I'm never going to change. I'm going to be this for the rest of my life. And this this would be okay. No. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. I think now that I'm not going to be even who I am right now for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And I am going to change even going further from this. You have one minute mm -hmm. remaining. And that I am going to change even yeah. going further from the point that I am right now. And oh. that will be a continuous process. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ariel, so. Um, yeah. Maybe can we, because I, I I'm unfortunately don't have a time today for a third call. Um, I'm very sorry, okay. uh, but I have some family okay. business. But maybe can we okay. can we go on with that on our next call? And maybe do you will you have one or two examples 
of talks or, or if you maybe have you know memories of, of some of these conversations would be so interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I have something to say more about uh, uh, Greece. Oh as yes. Well on the next card. Okay, I will write it down and I will look up after this this myth about the heroes. A Syrian re resurrection, A S S A R I A N, a star, a mm -hmm. Syrian resurrection. Okay, I will check that. Yes, Fantastic. Sir. So I, I I wish you a very very good day and and a good week and and Thank I'm you. looking so much forward to to talking to you. Thank you for using GTL. So that's it. So fast is it? It is over already. And yeah, as always, please support us. Forward that. Like it. Hit the bell, um, subscribe, give money if you can, and let's go on with this journey together with our dear friend Ariel. So, take care.